I've had these pellets for a number of years and I finally have something to recycle them into. A series of classic fruit boxes. Hello and welcome to another episode on the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. My name is Bob. In this episode I'm going to cut up these old pallets and convert them into a series of boxes. I want to retain the patina of age that they have and I also have certain dimensions that the boxes have to meet and that's what I'll be aiming for. I am working in the open on this and start by assembling the gear I need. A woodwork trolley, a work table, a compound miter saw, and a table saw. I am using my DIY track saw to cut the boards out of each pallet. I start by positioning the guide rail just inside the nails that hold the board on the pallet bearers. One of the problems with uh, these particular pallets is the wood is quite thin and of course you've got the uh, screw shank nails here which are impossible to pull out. When you go to lever the boards up the problem is between the thinness of the boards, the dryness or the old, the age of the boards and the screw shank nails, the boards themselves tend to splinter. Uh, so others, other pallets have been relatively easy to pull apart, these haven't. The first one I tried turned more to firewood than it did to anything useful. But I suddenly have a need for boards about this long and that's why it's working in this uh, project. I have cut up the remaining two pallets off camera and now I'm using the table saw to cut each of the boards in two. The boards are not all the same width unfortunately. This is pellet wood after all, so cutting them exactly in half is an aspiration rather than an outcome, but it will all work out in the end. Some boards will be left uncut as they will be used for the box braces.
Off camera, I've used the compound miter saw to cut the boards to length. Six end boards, four end uprights, six side boards and two base boards are needed to make this crate. Crate making is quicker when using a nail gun. Construction of the crate is pretty straightforward. I start by making the ends. I place two end uprights and two end boards in position and pop a brad in a pair of diagonally opposite corners forming two rough right angles. I then adjust their relative positions until the diagonals are the same, which means the frame is square and then double nail each crossover. I then fit the remaining end board. Before repeating the procedure to produce the other end. With the two ends made, I then fit the side boards. I position the top rail and put a single brad in each end to hold it. Remember, I said that the boards are not the same width, resulting in some halves being wider. This is where it becomes a factor. My approach is to sort the boards into matching pairs, so that one of each pair goes to each side. I place the bottom board in position, and then adjust the relative positions of the two until the diagonals corner to corner are the same. I then fit the centre board and that side is done. I then repeat the procedure for the other side. The final step is fitting the bottom. Each crate will have the bottom completely covered, although given the nature of the board, small gaps are acceptable. Two boards are all that are required for this crate.
this done. The brad nails I used make for quick assembly but the resulting joints are not suited to heavy use. So I am driving in screw shank nails to make the crate more robust. Screws would have been a better fix I guess but the crates need to look their age even if they are new. Yes, I could resort to old style slot head wood screws, but their fitting would take more time than the job warrants. One of the criteria in this build was to retain the original patina of the wood, which I have done. However, there are saw cut surfaces visible, which I will stain using a two part technique I found on the web. Here I am boiling the jug to make a tea solution. I am using Bushel's blue labelled leaf tea, but I think any black tea should work. I add three teaspoons of tea to the jar. And then add about 500 milliliters of boiling water. I give it a stir with a spoon and then cap it and leave it to sit. The second solution is made using vinegar and steel wool. I put the steel wool in a fresh jar and cover it with the vinegar. I am using white vinegar but probably any vinegar works. The technique I found said to leave the vinegar solution for 24 hours, so I've lined the two solutions up on the bench with the intention of coming back to them tomorrow. Okay, so I've got my two solutions here, the tea solution and the steel wool and vinegar solution. In the original recipe that I read, the tea solution I think you could use pretty well after it cooled down and the vinegar solution I think it was 24 hours. I have to be honest here and say pressure of other things to do, uh, these are about two weeks old. But I'm, I gave it a bit of a test yesterday and this is a cut cross grain here and I put it on you can see that it's pretty well the same coloration here as it is on the original surface over there. The end grain came up a little bit darker but when I look at some weathered old boards out in the uh, yard I see that the end grain tends to be a darker coloration than the uh, cross grain so I just assume that's how it works. So with that in hand, we'll move on to doing a box. Starting with the tea solution. I'm just using an applicator here, nothing sophisticated. You can even see it's so old now, it's uh, growing a little bit of mould.
uh, wet the end of the applicator and I use it to coat the cut surfaces of the crate Tends to darken up the original wood, so this is why I'm doing it this way rather than using a paintbrush, so that I don't get um, any on the or any more than I have to get it on the original wood. I will let that dry now. The tea solution now is has dried, and we're ready to put on the steel wool and vinegar solution. So similar thing and you can already see it darkening up. The demo piece is not quite dry, but when it's dry, I'll give it a rub with a bit of a scotch pipe, and I find that makes it fit in better, and just the ends. And in a couple of days, as it dries out, it will end up looking like this one here. If you look at this box, I'd like to think that you think the uh, proportions are nice. I suppose that's about all you can say about a box. This uh, making these crates gave me an opportunity to put into practice a design concept called the golden ratio and the thing about the golden ratio is that to the human eye it appears as though what you're looking at is in an appealing proportion now the golden ratio is a mathematical concept here I have a line that I prepared earlier if we cut this line in two and let's call one end A and the other end B. So one length is A and one length is B. The golden ratio is A over B is equal to the full length of the line, which obviously is A plus B, over the longer part of the line, which is A. Now, that's a formula and that you can solve with quadratic equations and obviously if you know what one length is you can calculate the other length so 
We've got our golden ratio now. And as I said, we can, knowing one length, we can determine the other length. How does that work for, a, for something like a rectangle? Well, you get the golden rectangle. And what that is, is essentially, this is your rectangle, which is the side of your box. The long side is A, and the short side is B. And so, putting hair on the box, the long side is A, and the short side, the height, is B. Now, as I said, you can solve this with quadratic equations, but the simple way is to type golden ratio calculator into your search engine of choice, and it will give you a set of numbers, or a set of inputs that you can do, if you input one number, it'll give you the rest. And so, if we know one of these measurements, then it will determine the other measurement. In my case, when I cut the pellets up, I was getting boards that were anywhere between about 430, 460 millimetres long. It depended on where the nails were for the pellet. Um, so, essentially, I settled on a side width of the box of 440 millimetres. When I put that distance, 440 millimetres, into an online calculator of the golden ratio, the result that comes out is 272.935. Now, this is woodwork, not metalwork. So, this becomes 270 to 440. And this is what the crate is. It is 440 long and it is 270 high. And I hope you like the proportion because my understanding is, as a design concept, the golden ratio, the golden rectangle, is appealing to the human eye. Now, of course, you have to ask yourself, was 270 the height that you actually wanted? Well, in my case, it worked out nicely because the height that the box had to end up at would be preferably somewhere between about 250 and 280 millimetres. So that was good. 270 fitted that perfectly. And the actual width that I had to work to was 450 millimetres down to about 400 millimetres. And some of you might recognise that 450 millimetres in Australia is the general width of a bench. So 440 it's fine, 270 is fine, works for me. It's a golden ratio, so hopefully it looks nice. And there you go, that's how it came out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making these crates. Lots of YouTubers recycle pellets, and so this is nothing unusual. It's another contribution to the great world of YouTube pellet recycling. For me, it was good that I actually found something that I could put those particular pallets to use for. I had real problems with the board splintering if I tried to extract the wood in the usual fashion. So cutting the boards out was the way to deal with it. But then, of course, what could I do with the boards? I've known about the Golden Ratio for quite a long time, but it's been the first time that I've actually put it into practice in making something. So that was a first for me. Finally, I learned a method for making new wood look old. That'll come in handy, I think. So once again, thanks for watching, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode from the White Dog Garage YouTube channel. Bye.